Vamos finalmente el chat. Yeah, anytime you get to play an MLS team, it's uh, something that we look forward to. Obviously, you know, they're a really good team and they're in second place in the West and the MLS, so it should be a good battle. But uh, anytime that we can test ourselves against uh, players like that, it's, uh, it's a good experience and uh, it's one we're really looking forward to doing. We were talking to your coach earlier about how, you know, like the past, you know, week, you know, you were playing it, but you already didn't worry about that. You were worried about the other week. How important was that for you to focus on this game? Yeah, obviously, you know, we, we knew that was in the, you know, it was in the back of our head that we had this game coming up, but, uh, you know, we take a game by game approach. You can only play the game that's in front of you. You can't play when that's two games away. So uh, we knew that, you know, we had to get that win on, on Saturday in the league, which was important for us to, to keep climbing our table there. Um, and then once that game ended, we shift our focus right to Dallas. So uh, that's the approach that we take. How exciting is it playing Dallas? Yeah, obviously, uh, like I said before, it's it's always fun to, to challenge yourself against guys that are, you know, technically in the, in the league above you. So um, it, it's a good measuring stick. And, and not only that, you know, we want to show well for ourselves and, you know, we want to show well for this city to, to get the best result possible to move on to the next round. Hmm. Uh, I don't think so. It, it, you know, it's still a 90 minute game or, or 120 that, you know, you win and you advance. So it doesn't matter who's in our path. Uh, you have to win the game to advance to, you know, hopefully lift the cup at the end of the year. So uh, be it a Midland, be it Colorado, be it Dallas, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever game's in front of you, you have to win that game. Can you reflect on this past season on how the teams improved versus um, where you were at last year? Yeah, obviously it's two completely different teams from this year to last year, two different starts to the season and everything like that. So uh, we had some personnel changes and sometimes it takes a little bit to, to get used to playing with new guys. So. Um, you know, it's still early in the year. We are only a third of the way done, but um, you know, I think we're coming together. We had a, a really good result on Saturday, um, so I think it's a building block that we can uh, spring forward off of that and, and really drive forward for the rest of this year. You were one of the few guys who uh, played in Houston a couple of years ago yeah. against Dynamo in that yeah. game. Um, is there something that, and I, obviously it wasn't the best result, but is there something you can take to kind of lend to the rest of the group? guys maybe like Alex and some of the other younger guys who are going to experience this for the first time? Yeah, for sure. Obviously, you know, you do try to lean on any experiences and the older guys have been in these situations before. Obviously, the Houston wasn't a good result and, and that one kind of stung a bit. Um, but, you know, the, the big thing to tell them is, you know, it's just a game. It doesn't matter. It's 11 guys versus 11 guys. So uh, it doesn't really matter who is on the other side of the field. Uh, if we just worry about us and we do our game, then we should be okay. Greg, there's obviously a lot of hype and uh, brouhaha surrounding this match. How do you guys keep that from sort of maybe getting to your heads and, uh, you know, spooking you maybe? Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, like I said, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's just a game of soccer, right? You know, it's sometimes you people get so caught up in the fact that it's a, an MLS team versus a USL team and, you know, they're, they should win because of the MLS team and stuff like that. But, you know, like I said, it's anything can happen in a 90 minute game, right? Uh, you know, you can play a team 10 times, but. Uh, and you might lose nine, but that one time you might win. So uh, who says that one time can't be tomorrow night for us? So uh, that's how we approach it. And we're just, and, you know, anything can happen and we're going to give it our best shot. And, you know, we're, we're confident going into this game. Hey, Greg, uh, you know, with a big game like this, whether it's professional or youth level, you're going to get butterflies in your stomach. Do you have any pregame rituals or routines that you uh, uh, do prior to the game? Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm a little more unorthodox than a lot of guys where people listen to music and you know all that kind of stuff. But uh, for me, sometimes I just want to joke around and hang out, right? The, the more you keep it lighthearted and, and realize that it's just a game, the, the better you play, right? Uh, you know, you try to make it fun and, and keep everyone loose and, and not uptight. So uh, for me, I just try to hang out and crack a few jokes and yeah. get everyone ready to go. Awesome. Um, with all of this talk about us still potentially going to get an MLS team, I know there have been some soccer fans that have been kind of disappointed in San Antonio. Is that something that you guys have felt or that's affected you guys at all? Um, I don't think it's affected our play or anything like that, right? That's a lot of... Uh, I would say background noise. It's it's completely out of our control. Uh, what happens there with you know Columbus and Austin and potentially San Antonio getting a bid? So um, if it's something that I can't uh, really change right now, it's not something I'm really going to worry about because uh, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'm going to you know keep doing and everything here and everyone at the club here is doing everything we can to put our best foot forward, right? And that's all we can do. And hopefully MLS sees that San Antonio is ready for an MLS club. Well, you know, 
it's a great opportunity to play against the MLS team and to show what we can do as a you know second division team. So it's one of the the biggest opportunity for most players here, and we're just gonna go out there and and do our best. Omar, you've scored in, I believe it's uh, four of your last five matches now. Do you feel any sort of burden to kind of step up offensively for this team? Uh, do you feel like there's maybe some uh, dependency or anything? No, no burden, you know. Uh, that is what I'm here for. So once the goals come, you know, it motivates you more to score. So it's no burden you just to go out there and do what you get paid to do. How does it feel to go on to the next cup, given all the work, hard work that you and your team have been doing this past season? Well, for me personally and for my teammates, you know, we've been working hard and I think, you know, it's just the work paying off and we know our goals and we are just driving towards it. You guys switched uh, the formation in the last game, uh, put uh, uh, a little bit more on your plate for you and Jose on the wings there. You seem to enjoy that though. Did you enjoy kind of switching the style a little bit and, uh, you know, having the game roll for you and Jose a little more on the wings on Saturday? Yeah, I really do like the formation, you know, because it gives us more opportunity around the backs and in front of goals so I think it works for us as a team because we've been on a road which it's not good and then we try something new and it's working so we're just gonna stick to it and see where it takes us. Has that kind of paid off? You seen with the practice? Yeah, I think I think um, obviously the performance on Saturday night I think reflected our week of practice last week and then this week, yesterday and today we've trained really well and obviously the guys, um, you know, we're looking forward to tomorrow night and it's a big test but one that I think we're ready for. Having a team like that here is that important for you to kind of you know see how your guys you know you give them that experience and know they go to the next level. So for, for us, it's just a, it's another game. You know, that's what we do. We look forward to every game as they come. Obviously, it's a meaningful competition as a, a great history, and we're glad to still be participating in, in the competition. I think for the fans and, and for the community of San Antonio, having it been an MLS team, um, FC Dallas, a team obviously from the same state, um, playing in a meaningful game. Um, it's massive. It's massive for the club. It's massive for everybody around and involved, and it's exciting. So, you know, midweek game, um, you know, in, in June, uh, to have this opportunity and, and pack this place out tomorrow night, I think is is, is wonderful. Um, it's what what the club is. We, you know, the players and staff all want to share it with the fans, and this is an experience we can share with the fans, and we're going to come out and, and give our best effort as always. You're a big believer in momentum. Uh, how much do you think the momentum of Saturday kind of plays as an X factor a little bit going into uh, tomorrow night? I think I think obviously Saturday the players, um, you know, we watched the game and you know the, the performance was very good in terms of what we were able to do in that match and how we were able to s sustain it. Obviously, we would have liked uh, the first five minutes, sorry, the last five minutes to have been the first five minutes um, because that would have probably taken a little bit of the, the edge off the game. But also, it adds to the excitement, it adds to building confidence. So we need to use that that um, performance on Saturday to give us some confidence. Um, but we know tomorrow is going to be a totally different challenge. Um, but I think everybody, the squad in the locker room, is in a, in a good place going into the match. With this uh, big push for an MLS team to potentially come to Austin, I know a lot of San Antonio soccer fans are kind of bummed. Does that um, like affect y'all's energy or anything like that? No, not at all. Because it's uh, you know we can only control what we can control. Um, and look, there's uh, there's. So many different scenarios, as, you, as everyone's seen over the past year. You know, when when those bids first came out, it was San Diego and St. Louis, and neither one of those have the, the opportunity at this point in time. So there's going to be a whole change in scenarios with that. So, you know, we said that from day one to the players. Um, these things change all the time. So for us, we have to focus on the now and the present because you know that's where we are and that's what we, that's our job to do so. And we don't, you know, we can't control those. You know, what the MLS is going to do, and all we can do is make sure we're the best 
a version of ourselves every time and that's the best version on the field, the best version in the front office um, and the best version in the stands and, and so look we want to make sure um, we put ourselves in a good opportunity and represent this city in a great light every time we step on regardless of the league, regardless of the game but every time we pull on that jersey and step on this field that's what we want to do. Coach, speaking of things within your control, there's obviously a lot of hype surrounding tomorrow night's match. How do you keep that from maybe uh, getting to your players' heads or you know them getting overexcited? Yeah, I think, look, we keep the same routines. You know, everything, everything we do, we keep the same routines. We're not changing anything, um, you know, based on tomorrow night's game. It's just okay today's um, you know, game day minus one, so we know what we need to do, and the players know, know what they need to do, and it's their job now to prepare like any other game. And when they step on that field. You know that they want to make sure they give the best versions of themselves. That's that's what we do, and we don't speak about it in any different light. Uh, we know it's a different competition, but it's an exciting, historic competition, and one we want to continue to participate. In. But no game for uh, another ten days. Does that maybe change potentially your usage and approach for certain guys that maybe wouldn't have a game on Saturday night? Yes and no. Um, you know, right now we just have to make sure we, we, we use the, the squad to its fullest and we'll do that tomorrow night. Um, you know, our approach probably doesn't change because we don't have a game on Saturday night. I think you know, our approach is, is always the same. We want to set ourselves up and put ourselves in a position to win the games. And um, you know, the guys that get the opportunity to pull on the jersey they, jersey, they need to make sure that they do it to the best of their capabilities. And um, I know as a staff we're very confident they'll do that tomorrow evening. Hey coach, Paul, on a lighter note, with the World Cup coming up uh, and probably during the break here, are there any first round games you're looking forward to? I always look forward to watching England play. Um, <laughs> obviously I'm biased. Um, I haven't really sat down and studied it yet. I love the World Cup. Um, the times mean this time, you know, for me personally, I'll probably have to watch the games in, 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 the, uh, in the evening, so I'll be spending most of the day avoiding scores. Um, but, you know, I know my children have already filled out their brackets and they're waiting on mine, so... Uh, no bold <laughs> predictions, but obviously I'd like to see England, Mexico, um, and I think France are going to have a very good World Cup. Sounds good. Do you see um, when the World Cup start, like you know, when the World Cup is going on, do you see like a renewed interest in soccer here, like more people coming out to your games or anything like that? That's a great question, right? Um, I, yeah, I think so. It's like uh, you see it all the time, and what I really like about San Antonio FC is that you know we could be everybody's second favourite team if you like because people have established relationships with teams and countries um, but when we come in the stadium we all come together and I think the World Cup is, is something that can unite people and uh, that's, that's fantastic and hopefully we can, you know, we can thrive in that environment as well where we can unite new soccer fans um, and they know they can come and see live entertainment and get behind the team and um, you know, that's, that's really one of the goals from day one is, is get people to support the local team um, in the local community and you know, our fans have been fantastic and if we can keep gaining that momentum that'd be great and if the World Cup can help us do, that, do so then uh, we'd gladly, gladly appreciate it. partido de mañana es un partido importante. ¿Cómo cambia la preparación, táctica, estrategia de un partido de liga a un partido como este? No, obviamente es un partido que si pierdes, chao. Entonces hay que estar más enfocados. Es otro tipo de partido, otro tipo de, de estrategia. Básicamente es salir a dar lo mejor de uno porque los errores te pueden costar una una pérdida, una pérdida, si pierdes, pues chao. Hablando sobre el rival, este, segundo en la conferencia oeste, último cinco partidos, cuatro victorias, un empate, eh, creo que lleva como 23 goles a favor. Un rival obviamente difícil, ¿no? Sí. Este, ustedes que han sido el enfoque, que han estudiado el video y todo para poder salir a, este, a conseguir ese triunfo. Sí, es un, obviamente es un equipo fuerte, un equipo que va de segundo ahorita en la conferencia oeste de la MLS. Eh, obviamente tienen sus virtudes, un equipo que le gusta jugar con la pelota abajo, se mueve muy bien, tienen buena movilidad, eh, pero también tienen su, sus falencias ahí que, que bueno, los profes nos no lo han mostrado. Eh, tenemos que aprovechar nuestros momentos, estar bien, bien aplicados en toda la estrategia que nos ha demostrado el profe. Eh, obviamente el fútbol son 11 contra 11, en cualquier momento puede pasar, pasar cualquier cosa. Eh, estamos con mucha, muchas ganas, muy motivados para, para enfrentar este gran, gran partido y gran evento aquí en San Antonio. Creo que va a ser una noche muy bonita 
eh, para todos y bueno, con, ans con ansiedad que ya empiece. ¿Qué tanto más los motiva un partido como este cuando dices, oh, nos va a tocar enfrentar a un equipo de primera división de la MLS? Nah, obviamente uno quiere demostrarlo lo, lo, como equipo o como individual lo que uno tiene. Eh, creo que va a ser un partido que los muchachos van a estar todos al 100% en, en su disposición y en su actitud para dar lo mejor. Eh, y bueno, eh, con la ayuda de Dios vamos a, a salir a lo mejor de nosotros. ¿Y cómo se llama? Con el partido, y después de este partido van a tener casi dos semanas uh, de descanso. Uh, la, estrategia, ¿La estrategia va a estar un poco diferente con este partido? Eh, sí, es un partido, como te acabo de decir, de copa. Es un partido que hay que salir al 100% porque no hay mañana. Eh, creo que el profe está poniendo un equipo, un equipo muy fuerte, un equipo obviamente con algunas variantes, pero, pero con, con mucha emoción y con mucha actitud los muchachos que van a salir. De los objetivos que tienen esta, esta temporada, ¿qué tanto importa esta Copa? Yo sé que obviamente pues, en la Liga es ser campeón, pero eh, esto es aparte. Eh, ¿La prioridad sobre esta Copa eh, también y salir igual a, a ganarla o, o cómo lo ven ustedes? Sí, nosotros nos pusimos la, la, la meta al principio de año de llegar mínimo a, a la semifinal de la US Open Cup. Eh, entonces estamos tomando eso con mucha seriedad. Eh, obviamente da una oportunidad para otros muchachos de jugar que no vienen jugando en la liga, pero es la misma seriedad, es la misma actitud. Eh, somos 25 jugadores de mucho nivel que, que el que está en la cancha va a dar lo mejor de él. Todos estamos aquí para, para dar lo mejor y creo que tenemos un gran grupo que no importa quién, quién esté, eh, el equipo siempre va a rendir. Y mañana, minutitos antes de que salgan al campo, que salgan al vestuario, ¿cómo mantienen ustedes esa tranquilidad? ¿Calmar los nervios? ¿Qué ritual es el que practican para poder salir y, y salir con la mente bien? No, yo creo que mañana, más que todos los nervios, ya va a ser más una, una, una ganas de salir a, 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 a correr al 100%. Eh, creo que el equipo... Está ansioso, pero una ansiedad bonita, una ansiedad buena de, de, de salir a, a demostrarle al, al pueblo de San Antonio que, que, que estamos nosotros aquí, que es un equipo profesional, que es un equipo que, que da lo mejor de ellos que nosotros cada fin de semana. Y, y bueno, esperamos que nos acompañen mañana para, para que sea una linda noche para, para todos nosotros acá. Cambiando un poquito, uh, comienza la Copa Mundial ahora la otra semana. ¿Tienes un equipo, unos partidos que estás buscando en las primeras rondas? Sí, obviamente partidos que se ven bonitos son México, Alemania, eh, Colombia, pues obviamente mi nación es eh, ansioso que, que ya empiece el mundial, ya faltan 10, 9 días me parece, entonces pues contento de que, de que ya empiece la fiesta del fútbol cada cuatro años y, y bueno, contento porque ya se va a parar el mundo el próximo mes. ¿Qué posibilidad le ves a México que pueda sorprender a Alemania? No, obviamente México es un, un equipo con con muchas estrellas, con muchos jugadores de, de gran nivel que juegan en Europa. Va a ser un partido muy difícil, creo que eh, lo más importante para ellos es que sea un partido tácticamente impecable eh, para poder tener un, un gran chance de, de ganarles. ¿Tú crees que la gente a lo mejor esté subestimando al tri? Que diga, no, con Alemania no tiene ninguna oportunidad. Ah, obviamente en el fútbol se ve mucho lo, el papel primero. Eh, uh -huh. Y en papel obviamente dice Alemania, Alemania es una... una una grande nación, es un, es un, es un país, una, un powerhouse de, del fútbol mundial. Eh, y bueno, pero el fútbol, como te dije antes, son 11 contra 11. Cualquier día puede pasar cualquier cosa. Pueden pasar errores, pueden pasar falta de comunicación. Mira lo que pasó en la final de la Champions. Liverpool estaba encima y por dos errores se, se pierde una, una final. ¿Piensa que los cafeteros pueden ir muy lejos en este mundial? Sí, Dios quiera que sí. Eh, lo único que me preocupa de Colombia es que en los últimos partidos no ha estado muy... muy, muy jugando muy bien, eh, si tú ves terminamos la, la eliminatoria un poco raspando por puntos, raspando por resultados, eh, se pata contra Egipto, un equipo obviamente que va al mundial pero, pero sin, sin, sin Salah, entonces hay, hay sensaciones mixtas, ojalá sea lo mejor para Colombia porque es un país que se lo merece, con muchos jugadores muy, muy, de mucha calidad y bueno, esperando que ya empiece la fiesta del fútbol. Finalmente el chavo.